Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. Is there a difference in the length of fast that's appropriate based on your age? Um, well, again, it depends on, on, on what fasting you're talking about. Um, it, it, I think that the, uh, the five-day fasting mimicking diet, as we're uh, testing clinically, uh, we think it's appropriate until age 65 to 70. Uh, then it does not mean it's not appropriate anymore, let's say, to do it three times a year. We now have a, a, an ongoing clinical trial on Alzheimer's patients. And, um, and so they're fine. So far, they're, 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 they're doing okay. They're doing fine. Uh, so, you know, they're much older than 65. Some of them are in their 80s. Um, so it doesn't mean you, they cannot do it. But right now, we just don't have enough data uh, to do this long fast uh, in, in the 70 and older, let's say. Um, then if you're talking about intermittent fasting, again, you know, if you do 12 hours, it's perfectly fine. Uh, there is really no reason to, to, to stop at any age. Uh, in fact, they might be he very healthy even for a 100-year-old person. Uh, if you're looking at other forms of fasting, um, I think I would put it in the same category. Let's say that somebody does uh, two days a week or one day a week. I would put it in the same category as the fasting mimicking diet, meaning that you know to do one day a week of of a long of let's say a 24-hour fast, uh, uh, I would not recommend it to somebody who's 75 years old. Um, I I agree with with that assessment. I, I found one person who's 81 who's been doing. Uh, about a, a 14 to 16 hour fast every day for, for 59 years. <laughs> she does not look like she's 81. Her brain is totally sharp. Her name's Margaret Paul. She was just on, on the show. Does a lot of work more around uh, emotional and psychological trauma. But, you know, when you look at the few people we can find who've practiced it, it seems that there's something going on that's, that's really beneficial. Right, right. But, but if you, if you, I mean, we, we're starting to think of a standard or an FDA like standard, right? Yeah. So then if you have an FDA like standard, if you think about that, it's like saying, you know, if you give a vaccine to a few people, they've done pretty well. Uh, can we give it to the whole world, right? Uh, no. Well, we need uh, seventy thousand people. Right? Yeah, so, we do. So yeah, th that's the same. It, the same is true here. And unfortunately, the, the epidemiological studies, when you do seventy thousand people or seven hundred thousand people, they show a shorter lifespan, right? So uh, for for the biggest group that we can find doing sixteen hours, that's why you have to you have to say, hmm wait a minute, you know, what am I, even though it could be beneficial to a lot of people, what if it's detrimental to even more people than it is beneficial to? And this is very typical for most of the traditional things. You know, if you look at something that's very old, it usually tend to do lots of good for, for in, in one sense and lots of bad, right? And that's why they, they never quite stick around. Um, and so, yeah, then we need to find, how do you get, and this is calorie restriction, for example, say, mm -hmm. calorie restriction that, my, that Roy Walford used to study has been around for 100 years. And if you look at it now, uh, and they used to do say fantastic things about calorie restriction back in the 70s. Uh, how many people do calorie restriction right now? Almost nobody. Like 20. And, uh, <laughs> almost nobody, right? So, but uh, why? Well, because even the monkey studies after Richard Weindruck, somebody else that was in Roy Walford's uh, lab, he did the 25 year long study. He realized that, you know, there is lots of positive and lots of negative. So if you look at cholesterol, blood pressure, uh, fasting glucose, amazing results, right? And then the monkey may drop that after anesthesia. And you're thinking, wow, how is it possible? Uh, what happened that in calorie restriction that makes somebody so sensitive to anesthesia? But uh, yeah, so, so the age-related disease cause of that were much affected by the long, lifelong calorie restriction, but then the overall survival was not that much improved. And, and it, when they did the same study at the NIA, the National Institute on Aging, it wasn't improved at all, right? There was no difference in, uh, um, in survival. Yeah, so the, that's the type of thinking that, that we, we try to put together to then come up with what's very safe for people and at the same time can make them live to 110 healthy.